I feel sorry for the anime staff. Why? Because Sorochi is not ending his manga just yet. Seriously, they must be thinking, why are you not ending this series already, you damn gorilla? After the fans practice the feel of no Gintama for a week, we are back with a new chapter that thankfully didn't give us a major brain damage. Instead, we got what we expected from our noble prediction. With a few new twists, that is best to say that we are going to be here for a long time. I'm not going to complain. More Gintama for us. Seriously, this chapter increases my interest with this setting and more questions that have me intrigued to follow. There was a brief feeling of uncertainty in the first scene with some guy in a mafia suit because, well, I was still scarred from Kana's reveal. It was building up to his reveal like he was going to be someone we believe we know who he is only to troll us. Luckily, the man behind the suit is in fact Sogo. Only now, he has his own gang. The good news is, Sogo is back. The bad news is, Sogo is back. Interestingly though, maybe not surprising, he attacks Shinpachi and the kids like they're his target, even though it is Kasura that they should target at. I got to credit Shinpachi for dodging those bullets swiftly as well as protecting Tamako. It's worth noting that Kana did her own saving, so the Ato bloodline is an amazing perk for kids. It's great to see Sogo and of course, he didn't die, that would have killed fans. His disappearance remains unanswered. At least until after the next scene. The gag scene with an awful drawing of Takeshi is hilarious. This has to be a reference to One Piece gag scene. Only this one has its own way to bring in the laughter. Gintoki either can draw a person accurately or he's trolling hard. He does go around asking for help to find him. The best part is where he found a guy with the exact same look as the picture. And yet he badmouths it like it's not his business. What's even funnier is his family has the same face, but pay no mind because, I don't know, <laughs> I, I just don't know. They're identical, so how the heck they dodged that one? It made it better that it went casually and never really point out the obvious from anyone. I got a good laugh from that small scene. Eventually, Gintoki does find Takaski in a few with strangers. I would have thought he was going to show more sinister vibe of his to give us more insight of his agenda. Nope, it wasn't him. I laughed so much at the reveal because it's Takashi behind the disguise. Yet I should have known better. The build up was the guy bashing him about women being disappointed. Somehow I missed that cue. The running gag never fails to make me laugh. Ginto could just pummel him like he is going to finish him off where the war failed to do so. Once Matako shows up, I was back to focusing on the potential drama for we finally see Kihitai in the scene again. I was ready for a serious talk with them since Gintoki did encounter Takeshi earlier. But nope, Gintoki got another serious question in mind. He was very curious of Matako but not actually her, rather her movie counterpart. Apparently there was something from her towards Shinpachi in the live action, which is funny because I have the Blu-ray copy and I haven't seen it as of this time of recording. After what Gintoki said, I'm pretty curious now. There's a good in your window joke that thankfully the note was written to understand completely. The joke is just him being him, but in a funny way. What a way to break the serious moment there. The chapter shifts back to Shinpachi and his more or less battle against Sogo. He does pretty well for evading all of his attacks so that's a good progress. He doesn't fight back because that's not his attention, which I respect that. Sogo does want to test out his strength after two years for entertainment purposes. Well, that's one hell of a way to do so. Perhaps the most interesting aspect is the new insight of the current world that really screams for this art to be lengthy. Sogo's death is only addressed as a metaphor because realistically, they felt cheated from this world. It's revealed that the mafia is practically Shin Shin Gumi. Even Saito is there without a mask. It's rather clever for Sorochi to somehow make Sogo as the leader without dealing with the ranking within Shin Shin Gumi. What compelled me is what Sogo said about why he left or died 
the new government has been controlling the new state of the world behind the scene and when you look over the past chapter it really does feel like it's all been a farce i'm very impressed that sorochi didn't go with the typical route of war ending equals happy ending tell me when was the last time the war aftermath doesn't result to all peace no problem I find this direction very appealing because not only it is going to be on a personal level than the war portion, but it went with a realistic route of not everything would result happiness. Usuro wasn't wrong when he said that life will have many hardship and suffering even without him. This revelation made his words truthful. Making a villain credible is worth admiring. Now I really want to know how this will be resolved. This also could connect to the last part of this chapter. It is funny that despite some truthful words about the lies and conspiracy from the new government, Sogo has created a new organization that surely doesn't scream evil. If anything, without the law of Shinshingumi, let alone in general, he is now free to be as sinister as he wants to be. Hell, he's looking more like the final villain of the arc. That's how much darkness he's showing. There must be more to his agenda behind this mafia thingy, but right now, he's a savage beast that wants to kill. Maybe it's because of the design, but Kana is adorable here. Yet she was being rather thoughtful and taunting in a way towards Sogo. She didn't feel any blood loss from him at all, so she didn't get what's dangerous about him. Wow, that is some fighting words you're spouting. Sogo swings his sword at her, but she's taunting him further while standing on his sword. Sorochi knows how to make a kick-ass child, huh? For what it's worth, the action is pretty neat for what it is. The artwork is solid with choreograph of evasive maneuvers. Kana was easily dodging his move and even called him a disappointment. She must have motivated him to fight at his best for being reminded of Kagura. Another interesting piece is Sogo dropping another mystery by mentioning Udder. It appears that Kasura won't be the only target and whoever Udder is, it could be a sign of a real focus coming in play. I'm really absorbed with this new plot. It's an appealing approach to have two focuses going at once and it does feel like both are slowly tying in together. It ends with Gintoki being sincere and somewhat protective for Takuski. I do like the connection from the last arc with Kiyotai never dissolved, only gone away for a moment. I do hope they reunite to shed the light on why Takuski left. It's a bit eerie for Gintoki to not call him living. The most touching scene is when Gintoki defends Takuski and it's not only because of his defense. Despite the hidden feelings behind Takuski's action, Gintoki understands his motive or at least has the best idea on why he split up and tries to attract no one's interest. It's obvious that he's trying his way to cleanse his past. It's just hard to understand his action and why that path. What really struck me is not only Gintoki was defending him in a way, he's actually speaking from his heart because he can relate to him. By that, I mean splitting up from his family. When he reminds himself from his farewell to Yorozuya, there's that sense of possible regret or action that he must take care of without others to be involved. It is a past that they feel that the present should not intervene, for it is their own personal demon they must cleanse for good. I seriously love where this is going. We have Shinpachi, who is struggling to move forward to a new path, while Gintoki is struggling to move forward from his past. That subtle expression of him believing their loved ones stopping them would be the best option speaks volume of his feelings. Two years and they got no real progress in their life. At least Kagura got a child. Seriously, it's only a matter of time for her coming in to bring the balance. And hopefully the payoff will be the best that any series could offer me right now. The ending is interesting because Gintoki is under attack. Honestly, I thought it was just a one-time moment with Hichikata's men. But this surprised me that he's really being targeted. The only question is, who? I am grasping the feeling that the new government may want to wipe him out because maybe we are back to the period before Amato's evasion. This was a pretty compelling chapter to read with a good amount of comedy moments. 
It's good to see Sogo back in action, despite being more devilish. The art is clean and the comedy is well delivered. The build up for this arc is getting really interesting. The personal scene with Gintoki is touching and sincere. I feel that this is going to be a real personal arc and honestly, that's the best option to end the series with. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. So, are we still calling this Silver Soul arc or are we calling it a new arc in general? We could still call it like the second half of Silver Soul, but I want to know what is this considered? Is it really a new arc or just a second part of this big Silver Soul arc? I wish there was a volume that has Sorochi say, yeah, we're in a new arc. My bad. Something like that. Something that Gorilla would usually say. I would like to know. But this definitely got my interest. Because I really like the fact this is going on a personal matter. I guess the one thing that the war in general, any war arc from any series, the only problem they usually have is that it's never too personal. Even though you can not still do it, but it's never get to the focus of that because there's so many characters to focus on. Here... I feel like it's going to be very, very compressed on his focusing of his character, especially with Gintoki, Toxki, and maybe some of others. You will probably see other characters get their part as well. It's just right now we're still unraveling the mystery of what is going on. And I like that. That's what makes it compelling. I cannot wait for how this series truly ends. What do you think of the chapter? Share your thoughts in the comment. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel. And my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.